Hello everybody and welcome to another video from me at Take Refuge TV. Now this is a uh, new software um, called Plasticity. I believe it's been in beta for a while but the uh, official 1.0 release was a couple of weeks ago. Um, so on this channel you may have seen me do already like Blender, Substance and ZBrush tutorials um, and they all focus around traditional modeling techniques. Now this is another uh, type of modeling technique different from sculpting or uh, polygon box modeling. This is called NURBS modeling. Now NURBS is quite often used in industrial design for things like automotive and aerospace design and NURBS allows uh, designers to create complicated shapes and surfaces for uh, like sort of hard surface objects like cars, planes and other vehicles. It's also used in product design, um, architecture, um, medical uh, applications it has, um, as well as films and video games, particularly for uh, hard surface stuff. So maybe robots or, you know, the dinosaur robots out of uh, Horizon and stuff like that. So I've just been playing around with this for about a week and I've never done NURBS modeling before. Actually, that's a lie. I've, I've given it a go and things like Sketchfab, um, SketchUp and, and, and things like that. Um, however, it's never really appealed to me because I was always stuck in Blender and ZBrush and I liked sculpting and doing organic stuff. I always found hard surface exciting but a bit boring for me to do. So this is just a little mess around file that I've been using to sort of um, design some different objects with NURBS modeling. Um, Plasticity is different from other NURBS software is that uh, I think its tagline is something like uh, CAD for artists, computer aided design for artists. So this is very much aimed at um, 3D artists more than uh, industrial designers. So for stuff like uh, product design and video games, this is going to be a bit of a game changer and it's very cheap as well. I think the uh, cheapest uh, Oh, it's got a 30 days free trial, which I'm still running on at the moment. But I believe the cheapest um, option is a hundred US dollars a month, which compared to other software is quite um, is really quite uh, a good deal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you around a little bit. It's got a different it's got a different workflow to polygon modeling and sculpting. However, there are similarities. Um, and what's really good about this software is if you go into preferences, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that on the screen. Yeah, I think you can. Um, and you go to a navigation, sorry, you can choose Blender, Maya, Moi, 3ds Max. So Moi is another NURBS software. Uh, Moment of inspiration, I believe. 3ds Max, um, and you can do touchpad for laptop touchpads. So I've got it set to Blender because I'm a Blender user. Um, and I'll just show you a few things that like, you know, th this is all the stuff over the course of a week. So I had a little fiddle around and I made this uh, sort of sci-fi box. Maybe I'll change the uh, render mode. Um, and I made a vase just using different technique techniques along the way. I made this kind of futuristic uh, steering wheel. Um, put that in rendered mode. And... These, all of these little projects that I've got here, this is a screw, this is actually probably shouldn't be here because it's something you can just make by default. Uh, I don't know why I did that one. Uh, this one, more like something like the vase, that's so not quite an organic shape, but a curved shape. Uh, this was just me playing around with, um, you know, the, the, the line tool. Uh, this is something that's cool, which maybe I'll show you... Um, how I did that. This is something that in Blender it's easy easy enough to do but it's kind of a bit of a pain. In uh, this software, in Plasticity, you can do that in a few seconds. Now this is a kitchen sink. I actually saw uh, somebody doing one um, on their YouTube channel and I thought I'd give it a go so that was quite fun. Um, a cup, which maybe we'll do a little uh, demonstration and make a cup uh, at the end of this. So that's really cool. I made an Atari, well not really, I just sort of 
vaguely looked at an Atari and um, made a budget version of an Atari, I guess, an Atari knockoff. But this was just uh, teaching me about certain things like, you can do this in Blender as well, but you do it less often, but you can use a construction plane, which just locks everything to the normal by pressing the space bar. And you get a temporary construction plane, and then you can add it as a ongoing construction plane. If you double click here, yeah, you go back to the construction plane. And if I double click again, I'll go back to the construction plane, which makes really great for doing stuff like this. So if I wanted to make some buttons on the Satari, for example, um, because I'm locked to that construction plane, if I uh, then make an array of buttons, I can, um, hang on. If I then make it an array and I lock it to the uh, Y axis, we can bring that down. What I've very easily done is made an array go down that normal. You know, in Blender that's not quite as straightforward, um, although you can do it. It's just very, very intuitive in this. So like I said, Plasticity is different from other CAD modeling because it's designed for artists. It's got a very sleek uh, and simple um, uh, interface. It's got a lot of context options. So it's like Blender. You can go one for uh, one for point mode, two for edge mode, three for face mode, and four for object mode very easily. And if I've got, say, this uh, face selected, and faces and edges work slightly different to poly modeling. We'll go into that in a moment. You get the context options down here. So what that means is that if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, it'll give you a variety of shortcuts down the bottom right of your viewport, which means that you might be able to find something that you'd forgotten about, for example. Um, here was some more like sort of, I don't know, like some sort of engineering item. I was just playing around with uh, radial arrays on this one. Uh, very cool. And I guess this one, these are not locked in, so I can show you something about this. So in poly modeling, you would get a lot of artifacts if you tried to do these kind of bevels or have these kind of end gone kind of areas. So really what this is, is if I just go and select all of these edges, um, because I haven't beveled these yet. So you got a bevel, okay? So if you come this way, you get a fillet bevel, okay? And I can bring that all the way there. And if I undo that, and if I go the other way, I get a chamfer rather than a fillet, which is really great. Um, and there's an order of operations regarding champs, chamfers and fillets, which we'll go into. Here's a mobile phone I made, uh, just having fun. And last night, uh, I used some concept art that I found on ArtStation, and just had a play around and made this uh, robotic looking creature. Um, which is pretty cool. So looking at all of these in rendered mode. So this is the kind of stuff that you would use it for. And there's some very, very complex stuff you can do with NURBS modeling. I'm just having a play around and learning the tools at the moment, but uh, maybe I'll pop some artwork up on the screen uh, right now to, to show you that. NURBS uh, is not polygons, obviously. You can convert it to polygons later but it stands for Non-Uniform Rational B-Splines. So that's quite a lot of, bit of a mouthful. So Non-Uniform Rational B-Splines, or NURBS, is a mathematical, uh, I guess, representation um, that you can, uh, that's used generally in computer graphics, I'm sure it has other applications as well. And it works by, you use control point, more or less, to shape a curve. And then you can make solid objects from your curves. And uh, I think the non-uniform part means that you can change where the control points are in 3D space, um, as well as along the curve. So that, that really uh, means you can make some very complicated and weird shapes that you wouldn't really be able to make easily with poly modeling. Um, and you can do that quite quickly. Uh, it's, you can't, you've got to think about it a little bit differently to poly modeling. Uh, it's not the same, it's not exactly the same way of thinking. Uh, yeah, it's pretty powerful for getting a lot of complexity and detail um, very quickly. So there, I know there's stuff like hard ops and, and, and that in Blender and, um, you know, the, 
equivalents within Maya and, and 3ds Max, but NURBS is the way to go if you're making stuff like this. Like for example, uh, we can make something like that very quickly. I'll just start a new um, uh, file and we'll just go into it. And I've set up the Blender controls. Okay, so it's very similar to. So I'm just gonna. I'll try and say what I'm doing on screen because I do not have screencast keys. Um, so I'm gonna right click on this material mode up here. I'm just gonna go to this material and show edges. And I might uh, also, just so I can get the, see the edges better, is go into preferences and I might just change the uh, viewport background to a, a lighter shade of gray. Okay, so first of all, there's a couple of things. So we'll start with this cube and have a look here. There's an order of operations. So if I try to make a uh, chamfer where there's a hard corner, uh, sorry, not a chamfer, a, a fillet, where there's a hard corner, it will behave like this. You'll get this curve. Okay, so that's useful in one way. However, if I, and I'm gonna use a keyboard shortcut, same as Blender, Alt, Control, and it selects the, uh, the next in the line. Um, if I choose this um, and do these these corners like that, the order of operations now recognizes this as a continuous curve. So if I pull that down, I will now get the whole the whole circle or the whole uh, perimeter rather, and that will apply to that as well. And then I can do things like add little fillets and. It's very easy, and just to show you how really easily this is, I'm just going to quickly, and we can just pull that out, okay, and we can mirror it, very much the same as um, some of those add-ons for Blender. You can choose this one, and that's a union, so we want to go and we've now got this, and then if we just uh, fill it this, we should be able to get a, full radius all the way around the top. It should, it should behave like that. Yep, there you go. Oh, except it, it defines that as the end because there's no fillet on these ones. So. Anyway, that's that. So I don't know what we should make. Um, I was thinking about making a cup, but let's just have a let's just have a play around. Let's go through the basic commands. What you can do, we'll just continue with this object. Number four on the keyboard to change to object mode. So there's all of these guys down here. Okay, so you've got a line, which makes a line. Oh, I think I've got edges. Oh, why is that not working? Oh, because we're not in edge mode. Okay. So you got a line. You can make a line like that. Okay. There's a lot of things you can do with a line. Okay. So we've got that line. We can, once we get a line, we can press C it's for cut. And then we can click the object. And then you press right click um, or enter, which is the uh, confirm button. And now we've got two separate objects. So then we can do stuff like, I don't know, maybe scale that down a little bit and add a fillet. Let's add fillets over here. And we should be able to get one around that. Except and then one cool, neat little trick that I found out is if I'm making a fillet and I like the size of the fillet elsewhere, I can click on this, other fillet, and it will adjust the size. So let's just do that again with a bit more. So we've got this really big fillet, but that's way too big. It's way bigger than the other side. We can just click this one and it will adjust it to that side. So that's a really cool feature. It just makes working so much easier. Um, what else have we got? We've got the spline tool, which is like the line. It's more like a, actually it's, you've got a spline curve and if you hold down, you've got a, a control point curve, which I haven't actually used, but I believe it's more like a Bezier one from Blender. So this one, 
does this. You can make, um, oh, and if you go all the way up, you close the loop. And then when you've got a closed um, curve, you can go into face mode and you can do a few cool things with faces. So you can pull it out like that. And if you pull it out like that and press tab, it mirrors it. Okay, so that's really cool. And then if you pull it out like that and go shift T, you can make a non uh, well a thickened a thickened line so you've got now got a, a strange shape so that these are all really cool um, uh, these are all really cool quick um, ways to um, to get shapes that you want um, so furthermore we've got a circle self-explanatory circle is really powerful so you can make a circle so actually let's so I'm just going to go G, just like Blender, and Y to move that out a little bit so I can play with it. I'm going to quickly make a solid um, out of that. And I'll go into object mode. We'll pull that one out. Okay, that's really cool. But let's get rid of these. Good idea to get rid of curves as you go along because you can get a really messy scene um, over a period of time. So now I'm going to make another little circle at the very top of this one. And that one's inside a bit, so I'll just go G, Y, pull it out. Okay. And let's just uh, fill it this first. And we'll pull this one in. Okay. And we're going to fill it this uh, top of that. Okay. And like I said before, if you click any other fillet or curve uh, or face, it will try and m mimic the top of that. So if you do it on a cylinder, you'll get that uh, kind of semi uh, half sphere. So I'm just going to bring this one in a bit. Why? And we'll go down here, radial array. Okay. And then we can just choose the center of the circle and it'll array it all the way across. So I'm going to make that bigger. Now they're all selected. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get rid of the curve. And are they all? Yep, they're all solid. So we're going to go four. And Q for Boolean. Okay, and I'm just going to drag and select all of those. Right click. And we've got that cool shape in there. And we can go and select these around now. In some cases, there are shortcuts where you can do uh, selections, but when you're doing big things like this, there can be a lot of manual selection. So, a couple more. Okay, and go like that. Okay, and then inside. No, that didn't work. So sometimes, it, you know, it's, it's an algorithm. So now, What's cool about this is that, you know, you can obviously make your high poly. So we'll go and have a look at this in this kind of metal reflective matte cap. Take edges off. And so you're getting really cool highlights on those bevels. And obviously doing something like this in Blender, you get a lot of artifacting with this stuff and it, crea it creates a lot of cleanup that's needed. And this has a really good export function where you can export um, the OBJs um, with quite a lot of good... Um, uh, detail on there. So continue going through the tools. Uh, we've got the polygon tool. Okay, so that's just making a polygon. Um, I haven't really used that much, but it obviously has its use cases. So I could um, go into this mode and I can go... Actually, this is a good opportunity to show off another tool. So we've got our, we've got our polygon. Okay. And then we get this uh, split curve or edge at a point. So you can, so everything's in context. So if I'm on this curve, it'll nicely slide along. And when I hit the middle, it'll tell me I'm at the middle. So I've actually set up a shortcut for this on my, um, so if you press F on the keyboard, you get this menu and it's got all of the controls, almost all of the controls, almost all of the controls. 
And if you right click anything, you can either assign a shortcut, which I have done for a few of them, or add to favorites. Now I've added a few of my more used ones to favorites. So, and then I've set it up on my mouse. It's, and that's the other thing about plasticity. It's got a really customizable interface. So it might seem bare bones at the beginning, but you can set this up with um, whatever shortcuts you want. And so if I just click this uh, button on my Logitech mouse, uh, I get this menu and I can just add these control points. Okay. And let's just, and it's a little bit of manual labor. So obviously on really big stuff, um, there might be better ways of doing this. Maybe there's a way to subdivide it, or maybe they'll add a way to subdivide it later on. Uh, at the moment, this is how I do. Now, if I select these two, hold shift to expand my selection and select those two, I can SS scale that, and I'm getting a star. Okay, that was really easy. And then I can maybe just press B for bevel, just like Blender. Okay, it's not Control B, it's just B, Control B. I think does something, Control B goes into full screen mode, which is usually uh, control space uh, and other softwares. So let's just put a bit of a curve on these stars. Okay. And let's see, and I believe, so if I go G, G for free, um, and then if I hold down shift, uh, it's not it's not working so we'll just put the star roughly in the center of this um, and we'll go G Y oh, let's go into inch mode actually G Y okay scaling that down and this is just a mess around I'm not trying to do anything artistic here I'm just showing you guys the uh, the basic controls and how easy everything is so let's just make that one go like that Oh, let's go into the right hand mute, just like Blender, it's numpad, okay, um, and let's just bring that in very so slightly into there, go number four into object mode, select that, Q to boolean, select that, right click, and maybe we actually bring that a little bit further in before we, okay, four, Q, boolean, get rid of our curve, or enter, get rid of our curve. And we've got that star embossment on there. And then we can do what we like with it. So because I already beveled those edges, it should go all the way around like that. And I only have to select one edge. I don't have to select the whole loop, but you can select the whole loop by pressing uh, shift alt. However, it will not always select the one that you're wanting to, but because you've got these fillets here, and it's not a hard corner, it will, it will perceive it as a continuous uh, loop. And we can actually pull that one in and we can actually use this fillet and we got that. And if we go into our other mode, we'll take the edges off and you'll see we've got some nice highlights on that. Um, so something, and then other thing, it's not like Blender, once you've done that, it's not it's not final you can select both of these and bring it forward okay and maybe it'll even let us bring it out no it won't but that's okay so we've got that object in there we can probably bring this back a little bit although it does when there's been a lot of operations uh, it does start to chug a little bit even on this AMD 5900X okay so um, yeah, and you've got other tools, so um, actually I'll probably do another video on making something, which is, um, but those are the basics, and plasticity is really, really great, okay, you can use controls from your other software, it's got a very super powerful algorithm um, that is uh, used in some of the other higher end um, CAD modeling softwares. Um, I believe it's the Parasolid uh, kernel. Um, and it's just a super powerful, super fun, relatively cheap software um, that you should all give a go because it's got a free trial. Now I'll leave this one here. I'll probably make, it, make another video on um, making some small objects. So you've got a bit of an idea of um, what it's like and see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.